The Milky Way from the Vibes of Cosmos books, links below. Milky Way is in the boundaries of the supermoon and submoon space. See the previous video about the layers of space, the real space. Or at the boundaries of the terrestrial and celestial worlds. Borders the atmosphere that has to do with the element of fire. Uh, and the ionosphere. In the ionosphere, you have high temperatures, ignition of fumes. We've speak, spoken about fumes, meteorites, electromagnetism, and ignition of noble gases. We'll also have to speak about comets in future videos. Above the supermoon, there are the uh, gradation, gradation. Sorry, there are the gradations with the toroidal fields. So I'm talking about toroidal fields, which are inside each other, which have their own motion and are called planets. I've made a video about the planets, about electromagnetic toroidal fields, one, one above the other in layers. So that's why you see them the way you see them. Uh, but also the sea of fixed stars. You have the sea of fixed stars. The sailors know well about this because the stars don't move, and which follows the upper direction of the whole ethereal electromagnetic cosmic field. The immovable stars in the sky that follow the above direction are ethereal concentrated reactions from the great depths of the oceans and energy spots of the Earth. I've made a video about the galaxies and the stars. So again, it's concentrations of energy spots from the depths of the ocean and the Earth, and you see them reflected in the so-called ethereal electromagnetic field above and that's why you see so many of them because there's so many depths of the oceans and energy spots on the earth um, and all this has to do because of the black sun we're going to speak about the black sun i'm going to leave the black sun from for like the later videos because it's very complex i mean not not very complex it's easy when you have the the text and you take your time but to do it in a short video it sure takes uh, a lot of stress on the brain um, in the ionosphere where all the energy is and the high temperatures and the electric charges and the, the noble gases that's where you have a lot of energy so the elements are separated by composition according to their density again the law of density uh, then i've seen some comments about people saying no density is the force that uh, goes uh, upwards and gravity is the force that goes downwards gosh people are so indoctrinated they just don't want to skip gravity even though gravity is an insult to human intelligence and even the scientists from the from the early 20th century even albert einstein recognized in the end that gravity is a piece of sh you know what and nikola tesla i've just seen something fall in the in the building in front of me and now I'm scared because it went like so fast. I hope it's not like a dead bird or something or like a human being. Anyway, um, these remnants, uh, sorry, where was I? I'm, I'm sorry, just like I've seen it through the window. I'm not going to stop the video now because maybe it was just like some kind of piece of trash or something. Um, where was I? So we have um, this galactic zone, the highest point of the, of the ionosphere. is called galactic zone. It's on the edge of the supermoon. We have the supermoon and the, and the lower moon. And galactic material is formed in the same way that the tail of a comet is formed. I'm going to do a video about comets. It's very similar to meteorites. They just happen at higher temperatures and with more fumes and uh, way above uh, meteorites as well. So it's the burning of fumes that come from the surface of the Earth, which took place at the upper limits of the ionosphere and its remnants passed into the supermoon region. That's very important because then you're going to understand why there's such a concentrated energy there of what we call the Milky Way. So these remnants all, all accumulate together in the galactic equator, which is called the Milky Way. And that is why we see places in the sky only with stars and somewhere uh, galactic equator, all the fumes where they passed to the supermoon and follow the electromagnetic orbit of the outer and toroidal electromagnetic field. Remember, don't skip the video about the layers of space because that's where you're going to see the boundaries between the supermoon area and the ionosphere and the temperatures and that's where you're going to place the Milky Way as well, the previous video. Um, I'm going to repeat these videos again. As I go along, I'm going to try my best to learn from my mistakes as I present them in a shorter and with more uh, street English vocabulary. So, you have these electromagnetic fields that cause the motion of the ether up there. Uh, it doesn't affect the new fumes, so the fumes have their own movement and the ether has its own movement. Uh, and this is um, all happening at that point uh, upwards in the sky or in space. We can say that the galaxy Milky Way is a big comet tail that gathered to the galactic circle on the galactic equator that is electromagnetically connected with the electromagnetic direction of the outer ethereal field. 
Even though this sounds like Chinese for some of you, once you understand that we live in a closed environment, pretty much like a, like a greenhouse, if you want to understand it. That's why we have this whole thing about the temperatures rising and falling and stuff. Uh, and everything is electromagnetic. Everything is electromagnetism density. So once you understand that, it's going to be easy. Once you understand the, the layers of the atmosphere and uh, space, um, and then some people were asking questions about why do you call it atmosphere, ionosphere, uh, thermosphere, you know, the, the word sphere. Well, as I've shown you in previous videos, remember when I've shown you like the whole uh, level Earth, but then the whole electromagnetic field is like above us, but also below us because we have the black sun and it's forbidden to uh, explore the interior of the earth more than 12 kilometers. Remember like the, the Kola super hole. And of course, it's also forbidden to explore the depths of the oceans as well uh, as we would like. So if you t if, if somebody would take you outside of the electromagnetic field, you would see it all like a sphere. So that's why NASA shows you the globe Earth with curved water, because in the end, the encoded message with the sphere globe is that it's that the whole like universe, as we call it, the enclosed universe, it's a sphere because the electromagnetic field goes all around us, not just like in a semi dome type of, of style, but also below. So who created all that? That's the fascinating stuff. You know, that's when your mind gets blown away because that goes way beyond the classical flat earth map in, in these groups where they show you just like, oh, the, the perfect creation of God um, in the, on the Gleason map with a perfect dome. Do you get my point? Uh, people are scared. Not just people who live on a spinning ball with curved water are scared, but also people who are from these groups, classical Christian flat earth. They're also, I'm, and I have nothing against them. I mean, you're entitled to be scared and you're entitled to, to believe whatever fantasy you like as long as you're happy. But that doesn't mean they have the right to point the finger to people like me who want to go beyond and want to understand the real reality of the real world and not just um, bits and pieces. Because, of course, sure, it's okay to start with the perfect Gleason map with a perfect circular ice wall, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing more beyond that. That's just a tiny piece of the puzzle. Uh, and I hope you understand that. So give me more time as we move along. I'm going to try my best to explain. But I hope you more or less start understanding things. So see you in the next video.